so what happened was that my niece was actually struggling a little bit on the bus. She, she was very shy. She was in the first grade. And some girls were um, calling her a tomboy, and she didn't love it. She, she asked them to stop, and then it just kind of got worse. And so to the point where she didn't even want to take the bus. And so I went on a mission to, you know, I was kind of racking my brain. How can we empower her, um, you know, to get on that bus? but also not to have conflict with these girls anymore, kind of to stand up for herself, but in a loving and kind way. And I think we do a great job in schools now talking about bullying and whatnot, but we don't, you know, I don't know if we necessarily always are giving kids the tools about how to handle it um, in a way that almost spares the bully as well, you know, trying to figure out why are kids picking on other kids. And so um, I happened to come across a T-shirt that said, I am not a tomboy, I am an athlete. And that was like such a pivotal moment because my niece wore that shirt and felt proud of to get on the bus. And then, and then I realized, and she realized that these other little girls couldn't hurt her anymore. Like she was kind of owning who she was, you know, but also putting it out there and using the exact word that they were using to hurt her. And so that was pretty interesting. And so I would say that that was kind of what sparked this fire in me and realizing that there are thousands and thousands of, of girls out there that, um, you know, that need to learn strategies and tools to stick up for themselves. And just kind of, um, it, it turned into this eight, eight week series where each week we do a different topic. So we talk about everything from self-empowerment to how to be a good friend, um, what to look like, look, what to look for in a good friend. You know, what does that look like to you? Um, someone you can trust, someone that makes you feel good about yourself, someone that you can, someone that's going to have your back as well. You know, I teach girls do the right thing even when no one else does, you know, and sometimes that means standing alone, but not for long because when other kids realize that you're that kid that's going to do the right thing, they're, they're going to want to be around you. And um, it's just been uh crazy to me the transformation that I've seen and now my instructors are seeing um, in a lot of the young girls that we work with. So it's um, a program that's really designed from for first grade all the way up to eighth grade. We have a middle school program, but um, you know, one of our classes is called Brave and Courageous and we talk to the girls about being you know, warrior-like, and we face paint them and talk about turning into a warrior, and then we kickbox with them. And so it's helping girls, too. Robbie. Each week we give them a different type of fitness, so it also helps girls to figure out what they love. You know, not every girl loves um, team sports, and so, you know, maybe her thing, maybe she loves yoga, or, you know, we, we do a class on the importance of rest, and the fitness piece of that is yoga. And so, but what we found is that over these eight weeks, change really happens. I have the girls draw a self-portrait on week one, and then they draw a self-portrait on week eight. And um, sometimes they start, they, they draw themselves like the size of a raisin. And on week eight, their head doesn't even fit the page. So we know that, they, that these strategies work. Um, so cut to where we are now. So we've been teaching in quite a few towns, and I have other people that work you know, on the program with me. And we, someone, uh, about two years ago, I uh, encountered someone that was a very big thinker, and I was looking at how I could grow, you know, this kind of mission to empower girls, um, but I'm only one person. And so I was looking at a lot of different things. I was looking at franchising. I knew I didn't really want to do that because I'm a mother um, of two boys, ironically. <laughs> um, but I wanted, that's my full-time you know, job or that I love. And so I was just kind of looking for a solution. And this person said to me, you should write a book. And so we did that. So I've spent the last two years writing a book and um, it, it actually turned into two books. So it's a guide for parents and instructors. And then we have a spiral bound um, journal type of workbook for the girls. And the vision is that now if I have, a, you know, I do a lot of work with Girl Scouts and Girl Scout leaders. Um, and so if I have a Girl Scout leader in California that wants to do this program with her, you know, with her troops and her girls, she can buy the guidebook and then she can get workbooks for each of the girls. And then they can do our entire program. It has all of the lessons, um, it, the strategies. It's um, got a lot of stories in it. Uh, Christine Basil, who's... Um, you know, an educator in Hopkinton. She's a great friend of mine. She actually wrote the forward on the book for me, um, part of her personal story. So um, we're super excited about it. Excellent. And we're just kind of trying to ask for local, you know, um, 
organizations like yourself to kind of help us to get the word out there so now people know because maybe we teach it Elmwood on Tuesdays maybe you know there are girls out there I know there are that you know maybe they have gymnastics on Tuesdays or you know even just local people now they can really um, have the tools and get all of this great information without you know having to be in our classroom you know we love them in our classroom but I want to just have this out there for everyone to benefit from terrific now if someone wanted to find out more about the program and get involved where could they go they can go to our website girlpowergo.com and that has all the information about the program and then the classes to register and they can and there's um, contact information on there or they can email us either at info at girlpower.com or erin at uh, at girlpowergo.com all right now when does the program take place so it takes, uh, it just depends on who we're working with. So with Girl Scouts, for example, kids' schedules are so crazy. So we actually cater to whatever they have their meetings. So we, you know, I've taught in people's basements. We've taught in churches. Um, it just depends on what we, we work through Parks and Recs. Um, in Hopkinton, we work um, through the PTA. But that's another thing, actually. If people want to put a group together and want us to work with them, we, you know, can help them wherever there's space. You know, I, I teach outside in the spring, so we'll bring it wherever we can. We'll find a way, um, just because we, you know, so we don't. I don't have a brick and mortar per se. We go into um, whatever spaces that we can find, and that's really worked, you know, well 